Well, President Trump has turned over his logs from January 6th. Gigantic gap. Yeah, seven hours it looked like. From 11.17 a.m. to 6.54 p.m. So the implication being there are missing records right, this from is, calls we suspect he made during we, that We time. know that he spent that time watching television, right. we, so fair enough. But we also know that uh, he often is banging the phones while he's watching Fox and CNN and seeing how things are going. So the idea that he spoke to nobody, so it was about, what, 1 o'clock-ish when the Capitol was breached? Right. So the idea that he spoke to nobody for the next five hours while that was happening? Right, and we know, we know he was, we know that he was like texting with people at least, right? Right. Oh, was certainly yeah. Ivanka, right? Yeah. Because Ivanka, like, uh, Don Jr. didn't have the stones right. to actually text his father. He had right. to go through Mark Meadows. Right. Like Ivanka, or Ivanka came into the Oval Office a couple yeah. times. I'm not sure if she... Maybe he just had his phone off. she texted him. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it on airplane. Just, airplane didn't, mode. Didn't want to be disturbed watching airplane his mode. masterpiece play out. On, yeah. on cable television. But yes, so, and, and it obviously harkens back to the Nixon, the Nixon gap in the, in the tape there. Do you this have any was ta- a gap of how long? 21 minutes, it was 16. Time period, it's right? some famous number that if we were a little bit older, we would like have memorized. We would have it memorized. I thought it was like 18 minutes. minutes. Maybe it's less than 30. Yeah, it, right, yeah. it is. And it, but it was at a crucial moment, and right. it has fueled speculation for decades about what, what was so, because like the stuff that they released was damning enough for him to be prosecuted, uh, it, certainly to resign. So they're like, well, what was in there that was even worse than that? Wow. You can't even, what, like, what, what, what crosses the bar? You're like, I'm deleting this. Like, I can't even turn this over. All of this? Fine. And so this is coming the day after, or a day or two after, the, the judge who's been overseeing all of these uh, cases of the January 6th defendants has said that uh, he likely, more likely than not, Trump committed crimes, uh, some type of a crime, in basically inciting these d- defendants to because the judge has seen so many cases come through that, and he's seen so many of the defendants tell him, I th- thought that I was operating under instructions, lawful instructions from President Trump. And so he thinks that he has enough. And these are, these are defendants in the storming of the Capitol? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, they, and they, so many of them have said, look, all I was doing was what Trump told me to do. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't know that that does a lot for me because, of course, they're going to say that now. Um, I mean. Well, though, what else were they doing? They didn't well, come up with the idea on their own. No. Right? I, I think Trump is certainly morally guilty of, mm. of, cause, of, of stoking the fires that produced the riot. It, you know, did he specifically clearly call on them to do this exact thing. I mean, I've, you know, I've read his remarks at that speech numerous times, right. and I, I would say no. I think it was, it's certainly reckless enough to disqualify him from office. Does it rise to the level of criminal incitement? I was not really persuaded. Maybe it does, but I was not really persuaded. And I, I think, of course, the defendants are now going to say, yes, it was... Their, their attorneys are going to advise right. them to say that, to put the heat onto Trump. No, we were just following orders from Trump. Trump told us exactly to do this. Doesn't look to me like in the speech he gave that he literally said, you know, he said we're going to march to the Capitol. We're going to show strength. We can't take back our country without, shra- without strength. We're going to show he Mike Pence's strength. He didn't say we're going to smash our way into the Capitol. And Did not say like, you're going to enter the Capitol that. at these junctures and you're going to disrupt, which is what I... It's not unless, good. I, right. like, it's not good. Right. Don't, unless we want to use but... the, the Haymarket Square, uh, if we want to use that precedent, you know, the, you know, where there was a... So a- anarchists and labor leaders threw a rally in Chicago um, 100 plus years ago. And after, as the rally was ending, with, with most of the leaders having already left or at bars, had gone home, uh, somebody, and nobody knows this day, who threw a bomb at police. It exploded, it killed some cops, the cops shot back and killed some people. They went up and rounded up all those speakers and executed them for inciting the violence. So 
they had, and, they, and there was, there's no evidence that they had anything to do with it. Weren't even there at the time. Well, that was probably, so a, bad, that was probably a bad call. It was a bad <laughs> call. <laughs> probably wrong. Bad call. But, but the Haymarket right. precedent would say that Trump's uh, guilty there. But well, sure. you're yeah. right. And it, uh, it'd also be wild to see him try to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C. Oh, <laughs> like, God. Like this. Good luck with that jury pool. I wonder how much of his legal jeopardy is connected to his political power. Like, he's in Georgia now drawing tiny crowds. His endorsed candidates are, uh, are, are flailing all over the place, whether it's Purdue or Mo Brooks, who he abandoned. Uh, if, if it seems like he no longer has a hold on the party, I wonder if it becomes more tenable for but, him to actually be prosecuted. But every time you think it's now okay and Republicans are going to start distancing themselves for Trump or speaking up against him. What happens every time you think that time has come, a few people do that, and they get run out of the party. Right. They get Adam kinzinger They get everybody, Liz Cheney. Everybody rallies. I mean, through. and then they become yeah. insane themselves. But it, then they right. build their whole identity. They either build, then build their whole identity about get, being against Trump and the Republican Party by extension, or they, they get quieter. Yeah, you might they be right. stop talking about it. So uh, Trump has to be a, I mean, I th and I think Trump is kind of, he's an albatross he, hanging around their necks. Mm -hmm. he, he, he would go into a matchup against Biden. He might still win, but with serious uh, 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 drawbacks that a generic Republican wouldn't have, that Ron DeSantis wouldn't have, that you know, a Glenn Youngkin type wouldn't have, that and really anyone with an R next to the name is not going to have. But can the party convince Trump of that? It's just not clear. And let's give the man his, uh, his due. He had a hole in one yesterday. Did you see this? <laughs> I, saw, I saw the statement. You've got to read uh, the statement. I got to read the, the statement. <laughs> the Trump hole in one um, statement. Uh, this is going to be a treat for our audience. It was 181 yard. It was playing at 181. I think it was a seventh. Yeah, it was uh, seventh, have, seventh, hole, it seventh hole Trump International Golf Club. Where's this? Uh, I can't find it. Well, here, let's see. Here's the New York Post. I want the whole, oh, oh you got it for me. Mm -hmm. That'll get you part way there. <laughs> Many people are asking, so I'll give it to you now. It is 100% true. <laughs> I hit a five iron, which sailed magnificently into a rather strong wind with approximately five feet of cut, whereupon it bounced twice and then went clank into the hole. <laughs> a two bounce hole in one. And I, oh, I won't tell you who won because I'm a very modest individual and you will say then I was bragging and I don't like people who brag. <laughs> this man put out a statement <laughs> celebrating his hole in one and finished it with I don't like to brag. Oh, our humble, beautiful, wonderful president. What kind of world is this that this man gets a hole Former in president. one? Former president. I did not mean to suggest that he's currently our president because right. the election For, was former, not. Pr former president. Just that's. I'm not, I'm not even willing to say that this hole-in-one was clean. Like, was this his first shot or was this a mulligan? Uh, I, don't know if it, I don't know if YouTube will allow us to discuss whether the uh, hole-in-one was stolen or legitimate. I don't know. There is a hilarious book, I forget which pro golfer wrote it, who describes Trump as the most flagrant cheating golfer that he's ever, ever so. played with. Like, what'd you have? Oh, three. <laughs> You're not even three. What? You were three still in the woods. What are you uh, talking about? You were I've only golfed. Uh, I, I actually really like golf. I know the audience knows me to be like not really a sports person at all. I actually do like golf a lot. To w watching uh, it? To watch. To, I, I play, play it, it every now and then. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's like mini golf. <laughs> Actual golf. Terrible. But, um, How about a round with Trump? What? How about a round with Trump? Yeah, I, I think he'd I think he'd beat me even oh, without that's... using any of the advantages. Oh yeah. Um, oh, well, he's a good, good he's putter. A, he's I'm a good very player. Good I well, I'll give I'll give him that. He's, he's a good player. Yeah, is he? Yeah. yeah. Are you, do you golf at all? I'm okay. No. Not much. Yeah. It's fun I mean, though. I'm a hacker. I like it. I like yeah. It. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. A Twelve pack. And... Now we're talking. Yeah. We'll have more rising right after this.